All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Benjamin Grant, and I'm the chairman of the Maine Democratic Party. Uh, thank you all for being here. We are here today to congratulate and welcome Senator-elect Chris Johnson from Lincoln County. Uh, I'm going to give the mic over to Chris in just a minute, uh, but I want to take a, a few minutes and talk about a couple of the larger political implications that I believe we see coming out of the vote last night in the special election. Um, last night's upset victory sent a loud and clear message to Augusta and the people of Maine. The Republican majority is out of touch with Maine people. In 2010, the Republicans sold us a raw deal. We were promised a laser focus on jobs. Instead, we've seen attacks on working people, the middle class, and our communities. Just last week, it was reported that Maine was one of six states in the whole country to lose jobs in 2011. The GOP agenda simply isn't working, and the people of Maine recognize that now. Because the fact of the matter is, this should have been an easy victory for the Republicans. Senate District 20 is a Republican-leaning seat that Democrats haven't won in 10 years. But after outspending us 4-1 to one in independent expenditures and backing a popular self-styled moderate, they still couldn't win. And Dana Dow, Republican candidate, I think said it best himself. This was a repudiation of what's going on in Augusta and the misguided policies of Governor LePage and the Republicans. Mainers simply want lawmakers who focus on creating jobs and putting money in the pockets, putting money in their pockets, and after a year of Republican control, we have seen that that's not their agenda. I think we all have to remember the larger context here. The people of Maine didn't trust the Republicans to run this state for over 40 years. And in only one year, we've been reminded why. Now we have confirmation that the people of Maine want this administration stopped. And today, we're one vote closer to doing just that. Chris, that vote is your vote, so why don't you say a few words about your vote? last night watching the returns come in, and uh, at that time the entertainment was uh, a barbershop quartet that came to Sarah and my wife just for a little break in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lawmakers in Augusta have not been focused on the issues that they were sent here to figure out. And what I heard from constituents while knocking on thousands of doors this winter is that the legislature needs to focus once again on the real problems most important to me getting people back to work and creating jobs that keep our kids in Maine. Making sure families have a few more dollars in their pockets to spend in their local economy and add their small businesses. Making sure that we take care of our seniors, our children, and the most vulnerable, and that we can all afford to take care of our health needs. Finding a way to do this without fitting one group of painters against another, and making sure that the next generation has better opportunities than the one before. I'm looking forward to working on these issues and giving the people of Senate District 20 a strong voice in Augusta once again. Thank you. Uh, so at this point, we'll open up for any questions if people have them. Um, can you speak a little bit about turnout? I mean, wasn't it really, really low, especially, obviously, compared to the Well, I, I don't agree with that. You know, I think it, it is obvious that special elections have lower turnout than a general election. That's just a fact of life. But I think you look at uh, Chris's ability to win town after town after town, uh, I think you see that uh, the broad message did sink in. And, you know, it's just, it's just clear that our side and, and, and the people who oppose this administration are enthusiastic about uh, voicing that opinion right now, and, and the other side is not. So. Has much changed in two, two to three months when the last special election was held, and just the House has come forth with a Republican one? Has as much changed? Well, I mean, if a Republican was able to win that special election seat, well, I mean, I think you couldn't that party it. say the opposite of what you're saying here today, or has that much changed in that? From well, then I'm sure now. they could say that, but that's not realistic. You got to look at the districts. I mean, this is truly a, a swing district with a slight Republican lead. You know, it, 
It's been held by Republicans for the last 10 years, and 10 years before that, it's held by Democrats. So this is really a bellwether part of the state. So I think if you look at this result, um, you can really project in out across the state of Maine, and not a district like uh, that LC last November. Are you at risk of making too much of this and just and saying that this is this is a message to all of Maine? Well, I think the Republicans are at risk of not taking enough from this. I mean, I think this is a very clear message uh, that they're worth, what they're selling is not being bought by, by the people of Maine. Well, Bill, ben, I, I understand what your point is on that, but, but do you really think that, that uh, Representative Dow was, I guess, Exemplified that kind of idea as a Republican. I mean, he was more of a moderate, wasn't he? I mean, he really wasn't, I guess, typical of the kind of uh, Republican that, that you'd like to run against, right? Well, sure. I said he's a self-styled moderate, but those moderates are falling in line with the government. They're in lockstep with the page, and that's the point: is that people are angry at their agenda, and they're willing to take it out on whoever there is. On and I think Chris can attest to that by um, anecdotally the conversations he had at towards with Republicans who said, I'm not going to vote Republican until the pain has come from office. And they also said that, that uh, Representative Dow, I think, was compromised by the fact they had to be in, here in the House uh, when perhaps he could have been on the campaign. I, I don't know if I'd ever characterize serving legislature as being a compromise. I mean, I think he was here to do a job, and if he had been doing it successfully, he wouldn't have had a problem uh, with the ballot box. Is there a reason why the governor didn't campaign with uh, with Dow? Um, I can speculate. I would have to imagine it's uh, because they didn't want the margin to be closer. You have to ask the governor that. You have to ask Danny Dow that. We've done some references to some of the money spent, particularly at the very end of the, uh, the time frame. What was it spent on? Yeah, the money against you. What was it spent on? Um, I don't know what it was spent on. I didn't spend my time studying what they're spending money on. I was focusing on uh, getting out and communicating with constituents. Uh, voters were very activated in, in this election. Uh, it's been suggested that this was some kind of organized effort, and actually what we had was a huge groundswell of people that were out in the district liking what they're hearing I stood for, talking to their friends and neighbors, talking to other people in their church, writing letters to the editor. And you know, we obviously tried to encourage that, uh, but people were standing up and doing things on their own, even beyond that. It really showed that there was a lot of interest in change. I, I assume they spent on traditional things like mail and advertising. Ben, how much money did did the party and the Democratic PACs put in, the, the Senate PACs and others? I, I believe we only put in about $6,000, which is a, a very small amount. For Combi us. Among all of them? Yeah, among them all. Yeah, we were outspent four to one by our talent. The um, Republicans found press release on Friday saying that you were getting a lot of support from unions and that they were out knocking on doors. Is that true? Um, not, <laughs> not from anything that we're aware of at all. We were not communicating with unions to act on behalf when we're not endorsed by unions. Uh, what we saw was a huge number of people that you know, I would go to a gathering of 30 people in a house and we'd talk for an hour about issues and where I stood on things and what was concerns of theirs. Uh, and we had good earnest conversations. And when he left that room, complimented me on that discussion and said, I'm going to go talk to friends and neighbors. And that's really where I think it, it landed. It's people that for once felt that there was an opportunity to make a change, to be heard, and to get Augusta focused again on things that do matter to them, and they wanted to go out and make that happen. Yeah. I, would, I would just say, when Republicans start complaining about unions, you know you've got them, but they don't have much else to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's just so, so run of the mill from their side, so I don't put much talk in that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.